welcome back everybody to our Let's Play of Subnautica. This is episode 7. Last I left off with you guys, we had done quite a bit of progression into the alien side of the story in this game. We visited the quarantine enforcement platform, went around, showed you where the alien caches are, and I finally built my prawn suit. Today, I'm going to be going to a couple of wrecks that I need to check out for some blueprints that I need for the Cyclops as well as my prawn suit and we are gonna go scout out the Lost River. I'm going to essentially map it out for you guys so in the future hopefully it makes things a whole lot easier whenever you're trying to figure out exactly how to navigate down there. Before I go over there, I need to get a couple things. I no longer need that second oxygen tank. Um, I will be taking the propulsion cannon, though. I will need that. And I need to do a couple more things. Where are my gel sacks? Uh, don't need you. You can stay. Uh, and you? Okay. <sighs> okay, come over here. Pick three, cut one, and then plant those, cut them up, that's six, seven, eight, uh, yeah, that's plenty, yeah, that's actually two more that I needed to plant. That's fine. Don't need those two unnecessary cuts. All right. Get some tube samples so I can make some water before I take off. Now, whenever you go out on long trips, welcome aboard, Captain. Water is very important. You run out of it faster than you run out of food, and plus, if you do the nutrient block trick that I showed you guys in one of my early vids. You don't have to worry about food for a very long time. So like right now, I was at 97, now I'm at 172. I'm not gonna have to touch that for a really long time. Water, on the other hand, I will run out of. Oh, I forgot to make one more thing and it's over here. I do not have the water filtration machine because I'm here in the shallows. I have plenty of coral tubes and salt around me. So I can just make water that way. At this point, it's unnecessary power being sucked away from our base. All systems online. All right. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stick around because the sun is going to set here pretty soon. And once it does, I can just sleep and it'll be daytime. It'll be a whole lot easier to show you guys around once that happens. So in the meantime, let's do a little bit of moseying around the base, check things out. And I do have the one inventory, the cargo expansion over here. Storage container, nothing's in there, which is fine. I shouldn't need more than that for our trip. And our poor little prod has no upgrades. I don't need a storage module on it because, check out this bad boy. Yeah, lots of storage in there. Thank you to that mod for that one. Um, engine efficiency, that could be helpful. I'm personally not going to use it. Hole reinforcement will definitely be helpful, but as you see, I need more diamonds. I could probably grab a couple while I'm out. And let me check the modification station. It's almost nighttime. Fantastic. I can make another ultra high cap tank if I wanted to. There's no need for that. And of course, the depth module. Definitely can't make those yet. Propulsion cannon. Eh, I'm good. Yep, so we don't need to make any of those either. Oh, can I sleep yet? Yeah. Take a snooze. Oh, I need to take off that pinned blueprint of the prawn too. I don't need that anymore. We already made it. Yes, yes. Do your morning stretches. Have some taters for breakfast. And oh, over here. 
There we go. All right. Oh, wrong way. And we're off. All systems online. Okay, so the two wrecks that I'm going to be going to to show you here on the map. I'm going to filter my biome just so you can see it. The first one I'm going to be going to is going to be over here in the sparse reef slash sea treaders area down here. The second one that I'm going to be taking you to is going to be over here at the very top of the Grand Reef area. A lot of you guys are playing on consoles or you're just not using mods. So I'm going to show you how to get there the old fashioned way. First thing you want to do, turn on the beacon for this. Life pod 19. Good old Keen's pod. Early game is one of the best places to get a whole bunch of resources. Now, I could just head this way, but to make things easier for you guys, I'm going to head straight over here first so you can use this in your games as a point of reference. Hopefully it helps you out. So, pass through the kelp forest, over the grassy plateaus, we'll go to the sparse reef where Keen's Pod is located. Some of you might be asking yourselves, well, Tuna, you're going, you said you're going to the Lost River. Why are you in your Seamoth? Shouldn't you be taking the prawn suit? Uh, usually, yes. That is a very good rule of thumb. But, main reason I'm taking it is because it's faster right now, because I don't have the grapple arm just yet. Even though that's one of the blueprints that I'm going for right now. But... Also, a lot of you guys are a lot more comfortable in the Seamoth as well. It's mainly what I gauged whenever I was talking with a lot of the guys in the Discord server. A lot of people are just a lot more comfortable in the Seamoth. I'm assuming it's because you just get it so early, and some people don't get the prod until much later, which is fine. So, for those reasons, I will be using the Seamoth. Works just fine for what I need right now. Okay, so, keen spot here in the Sparse Reef. Once you find this wreck right here, you're good. Okay, so you want to find it, and then you essentially want to just head almost directly west of here. Sparse Reef is nice and quiet. I like it out here. And there it is. See how easy that was? It is that close to Keen's Pod. This is a very large wreck, as you can see. There's a decent amount of stuff to get here. So let's get to exploring, shall we? First thing, fairly certain I need this whole fragment. Yes, and there is the Cyclops. Right. Nice. This is the last nuclear reactor fragment I need. I do not know if I'm going to be using the nuclear reactor or not. We'll see. More than likely, I won't be using it in this playthrough. Because I don't really need it. She is talking about the Sea Treaders. They are really cool. If you've never seen one in, in the game, highly recommend you check it out. Because those things are pretty cool. Okay, so in this wreck, you can come down here. There is sometimes stuff to come on. Don't be, don't be like that. There we go. There's sometimes some decent stuff down here that you can find. Um, there's a whole lot of nothing down here for me though. So we'll come out, come up through here to this sealed door. There are going to be quite a few sealed doors that we're going to be going through. You can expect that with pretty much every wreck. So make sure that you have your laser cutter and make sure that you have at least one good battery. Uh, okay. Yeah, so as you can see, there are many more Cyclops fragments in here. There's a Prawn fragment as well. But by this time, you should have prepared the Aurora, gone into the Prawn Bay, and gotten all of the 
pieces that you needed. So I am looking for. I'll look for. Was it? Was that the only thing? I could have sworn there was one other thing I needed to grab in here. inside of here as well, but I could be wrong about that. Let's backtrack a little bit. Is anything? I know this wreck is a lot bigger than this. Ah, there's a data pad right here. I think that's one that I already picked up though. Yeah. If you pick up a data pad and it doesn't give you the notification that you got anything from it, it's because you've already gotten that information somewhere else. There are a couple of data pads that are locations. They're nothing super important. It's mainly just building on the in-game information and lore surrounding the Aurora. So don't worry about it too much. Okay, I know there's another entrance around here somewhere. Warpers, please stay away. I don't want to have to be that guy is rude right back to you. Yeah, see, he's already coming into my area. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and spook him. That's right, go away. Shoot! And that is not an entrance. I could have sworn there was another entrance here that I'm missing. It's gonna be really obvious too. Yep, right there. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, here we go. More whole fragments. See, yeah, I knew there was a data box in here. Dr. Bay repair module. There's also plenty of other stuff that you can scan in here in case you missed those earlier as well. fragments and I think that's it for this wreck yeah so you got those two sides be sure you come into this side as well for that data box scan all the Cyclops fragments that you need grab the data pads the data box goes outside yep and we are off whoa all right so we're gonna head back to Keens away from that asshole. Go ahead, drink a bottle of water. Didn't do it earlier because I was still close to the warper. And I can't... Actually, I want to show you guys one thing while I'm over here in this area. And I think it's... Yeah, it's right over here. Alright, so you remember that blood kelp zone that I was at earlier? I think it was last episode. Yeah, so there is another blood kelp zone. Yes, that's right. There's another one down here. This is called the Blood Kelp Trench. That's where this area is. It's you know about a kilometer away from your spawn, depending on what spawn you get in the shallows. You can come over here if you want to. There isn't a map marker or a uh, life pod beacon that you get for that area. You kind of just have to stumble across it. But what's special about that area is it is also another entrance into the Lost River. And fun fact, there are two different entrances to the Lost River through... Am I going the wrong way? Or am I going crazy? Oh, I'm already here. Okay, yeah, I'm going crazy. Uh, anyway, yeah, there are two entrances to the Lost River over there in that Blood Kelp Trench. And they go to two very different areas of the Lost River as well. Okay, so we are in the Grand Reef. We want to start following this to the east, northeast. And you can kind of just hug the outskirts of it right here. It is a little bit of a swim to get to this wreck. So if you start feeling like you've missed it, don't worry. Just keep going. Because chances are you haven't gotten there yet. The 
this is one of the largest biomes in the game as well. So it's very easy to get turned around and whatnot. And here is the other wreck that I wanted to go to. And as you can see, there's a drill arm right there. That's one of the things that I need over here. But that's not the only thing I'm going to find here. And I already have a thermal plant. Don't even need it right now. Oops. There we go. And where's my wreck? It's going this way the first time. Okay, there's another data box down here. And yeah, Cyclops Depth Module Mark 1. I already have that. I'm going to grab it anyway. Just for the extra titanium, because why not? And then there is going to be an entrance to this wreck as well. Uh, right here. Okay. And here is the grappling arm as well. I just need to find one more fragment to it. Is a door that I can cut right there as well. I might have to actually. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Nope, I don't want to. What in the hell? <laughs> that was weird. That's not how you use a laser cutter. You dummy. These swim charge fins are super, super helpful. But keep in mind that it only powers what you have uh, on you and while you're moving. So, as you can see, the battery is going down in my laser cutter. It would recharge if I kept it out. However, since the majority of my movement involves the sea glide, I have recharged it. So, what I'll do. Oh my. I am scared. That's what I am. Alright. Repulsion Cannon. Got that one as well. But, just a heads up, that's where you can find these things in here. Um, anyway, yeah. As you saw during that cutscene, um, I need to go get air before I do anything else. Yeah, I swapped the batteries out. Just so I can start recharging this one. Always be on the safe side. I am used to playing in hardcore mode, so I am very careful with my oxygen. Actually, the very first hardcore run I legitimately attempted, I actually beat the game on it, which was pretty cool. I was pretty proud of myself. And then, probably half an hour later, I tell my uh, girlfriend, like, hey, I'm gonna go check on dinner. Will you uh, take over? Just, you know, gather some materials for me. And she's pretty uh, versed in the game as well. She's pretty good at it. So she says, sure, I'll take over. And then she yells at me, says that she killed me on my hardcore run. Yeah, so she kind of forgot that it doesn't give you warnings about oxygen. You still get warnings about food and water, but not for oxygen. She forgot, and she drowned me. Drowned me all sorts of good. <sighs> Babe, if you're watching this, I am not sorry for bringing that up publicly on YouTube. You deserve to be shamed for it. Okay, so we visited the two wrecks that I wanted to go to. I'm going to turn off that beacon, and I'm going to turn on this one right here for the 500 meter Degasi habitat. And I don't need water just yet, so I'll hold off. How am I doing on food? 131. Okay. So, as you can see, 500 meter Degasi base is a little bit behind us. We'll backtrack a little bit and head straight to it. 
Now remember, this is one of five entrances to the Lost River. I'm going to take you through this one for a couple of reasons. And I will explain it once I get closer to the base. Because it'll make a bit more sense while I'm down there. Right. Excuse you, Mr. Ray. I'm going to slide down here. It is quite bright down here, thanks to all the anchor pods. So I'm not really going to need my lights, which is great, because that means that the crab squids are going to be less likely to come and find me. All right, so reason why I'm taking you into this one, because whenever you eventually visit this base right here, and you get the PDAs that are inside of it. You come down here and read them. It's talking about how they were attacked by something much deeper. Paul's last entry right here talks about saying, seeing a light deeper as well. So that is alluding to something on, you know, further down, right? And if you remember from the PDA entries that we collected from the enforcement platform, it lists a couple additional locations. I mentioned one of them to you guys. Uh, alien data. Oh, hello. Go away. Get down here. I actually took a decent chunk out of my CMOS help. Before we were rudely interrupted. Let's see here. Uh, terminal data. Which one was it? Scan data. Which one was it? Codes and clues. Alien facility location. That's what it was. Okay, so disease research facility. 800 meters. With the Mark III depth module, we can go down to 900 meters. So that means we can get to it if we can find it. So this is the first entrance to the Lost River I'm showing you guys right here. This is what it looks like. If you want to bring your Cyclops down here, you absolutely can. All of the entrances to it, except for one, I think, over in the Blood Kelp Trench, are large enough for your Cyclops. So we are just going to hug this left side right here. As you see, it kind of forks. We're going to hug this left side, and as you can see, there is a massive skeleton right over here. I'm going to go ahead and drink another water bottle as well. Alright. So some of you have been saying that I've been a little fickle on what I scan. It's for good reason. A lot of the common stuff, I'm not really going to scan. I will scan all this stuff down here, though, because it is, it is really cool to read about. So, research probes. The prominence and facing of these alien devices suggest they are some kind of probe or sensor. Their subject would seem to be the vast skeleton in the center of the cavern. Well, no shit, PDA. The attached cable network may lead to a remote power station or data hub. Hint, hint, right there. And you can scan the skeleton as well. Pull that up. I'll read it in just a second. By the way, if you've never been down here before, this brine down here is acidic. It will sap away your health very quickly, and it will also hurt your sea moth. So be mindful about that. It does not hurt your prawn suit, though. The prawn suit is strong enough to where it will not be hurt by that. Okay, so ancient fossilized skeleton. Skeleton of a million-year-old armored carnivore. Projections suggest this life form would have been larger than any leaving living creature encountered on the planet. The oceans of the time would have been very different to support life forms of this size, with more open geography and many more individuals in the Leviathan range. Makes sense. A lot more open sea, a lot more room to grow. So this is our first stop down here. And this is also why I brought the orange tablet. Because this is where you need it. Also remember where we got that orange tablet. You get it in that 500 meter Degasi base. So it makes sense that you use it right next to 
where you entered the Lost River. So we got some bone specimen cases right here. And that's going to be for all of them on this side. There's a floor specimen case as well. So these guys were doing some serious research. Research equipment. There's another cuttlefish egg down here as well. Along with additional ion cubes. And finally, data terminal. New PDA data. I'm gonna pull that one up first. So I'll read that one. Alright. Fauna reprodu reproductive data. Extensive alien research data on the local fauna with a special focus on their reproductive methods. Core conclusions have been synthesized. The aliens discover the life forms on the planet have just one sex. They blur they observed local organisms engaging in asexual reproduction. So, excuse me. This tells you one thing. So one, reproducing asexually typically means they don't use the regular and fun form of intercourse, right? All healthy individuals tested were capable of egg laying. Eggs usually require genetic material from another of the species. In rare case, only one parent was required with evolutionary mutation introduced by the effects of the environment itself. Research appears to have been focused around hatching conditions and genetic variations between parent and child. So what exactly does this tell us? Well, if you remember, we also got the alien containment from that 500 meter habitat as well. This tells us a couple of things mostly relating to that and breeding additional fish or raising eggs. So eggs, typically they only need a suitable environment. You see that whenever you get the data entry for the eggs themselves. This also tells you that some of the specimens that you will put in your alien containment do not need multiple uh, individuals. So for example, if peepers were to happen to be one of them, you would only need one peeper in there and it would start just reproducing eggs. Uh, peepers are not one of those creatures. You do need more than one peeper to start reproducing them. But it alludes to some of the other ones. I'm not going to spoil it for you. You can tinker around if you want to. So alien flora research. Local plants being held in stasis. Uh, stasis. <laughs> stasis. The aliens evidently sought an extensive knowledge of the planet's ecosystem, which would have been necessary to support any live specimen research. Research equipment. Large lab laboratory table and accompanying scanners incorporate technologies far beyond our current level of understanding. Hypotheses, equipment maintenance, staff maintenance, specimen analysis, specimen gene manipulation. So this was a uh, research outpost which makes sense due to the research probes out here next to this skeleton. So essentially what the aliens did was they created this research base down here to study, you know, the different flora and fauna on this planet. Uh, I feel like it didn't give me... I feel like I'm missing something here. What did it not... There we go. Yeah, mixed leviathan fossils. These fossils likely came from an, the ancient ancestors of the leviathans which inhabit the planet today. The relative size and delicacy of the bones suggest they formed part of the ear canal or some other complex internal structure. So they were studying leviathans. Why were they doing that? Outside of their absolute sheer size? You always want to dig into them. Find out what makes them tick. Okay, anyway, moving on. We are leaving this part of the Lost River. Now, remember, we came in from that side. We came over here to that little research outpost. So we're going this way. Now, this way leads to the main central chamber of the Lost River. Now, there are, I think there are four or five different tunnels they all converge in here. And that is a Juvie Ghost Leviathan as well. This biome contains unusually high concentrations of organic and fossilized remains. Okay, get that guy to leave. I'm gonna park this right here so it's safe. Come out here. Scan this. 
Oh shit. No! Oh! Ow, 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 ow. Ooh. <laughs> Actually took a bite out of me. I'm impressed. Welcome aboard, Captain. And he's stuck. That's what you get. You greedy bitch. Alright, uh, indigenous life forms. Gargantuan fossil. Alright, I'm gonna get away from this loud bastard so I can get to a safe spot where I can read this in relative peace. But as you can see, this is an absolutely massive skeleton over here. I'm just gonna hide over here in the corner. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip of my tea real quick. Ah. Okay. Gargantuan fossil. And yes, for you guys across the pond, that is iced tea. Judge me. Get over it. Gargantuan fossil. The fossilized remains of an extinct super predator. Its sheer size would have prohibited it from entering such an enclosed space, suggesting the geography of the planet has shifted around it over time. A true apex predator. Dated at approximately 3 million years old, rib cage measurements suggest the creature was eel-like in structure. Calculations suggest this is only the front third of the specimen. The remains now support a vibrant microcosm of life. Note. There are a series of precise, angular indentations on the ribcage, suggesting a third party has taken samples from the specimen at a previous time. Remember this that I just read to you guys? Yeah! Wonder where they got those fragments from, right? Alright, so, as you can see, that's the skull, and then all this right here is part of it. This bastard is massive. Okay, just to recap and show you guys where we've come from. Down here was our entrance. As you can see right here, here's the habitat. This was the entrance through the deep Grand Reef. We came to this research facility right over here. And yes, there is an exit on the other side of it up top that I didn't show you. That is one of the uh, entrances that you can get to through the blood kelp, uh, excuse me, that blood kelp zone, that southern one. So over here in this area, is straight across. I'll go ahead and take you over there to show you what it was. So we came from over here. We came straight at the front of that skull. Fuck off. Go away. Leave me alone. Not interested. Mm. Ghosty boy is angry. Now, a lot of people like to go through the mountain entrance, which is perfectly fine. It makes sense. I will be going through that one as well and showing you what that one looks like. For good reason. There's a really good reason why people enjoy going through that one. And is that radio beacon going to go away? Oh my gosh. Do you mind? All right, see that fella? Anytime you see a crab squid, that means you're starting to get to an area where they spawn which is typically going to be either Deep Grand Reef or Blood Kelp areas. So this is the other part of that Blood Kelp Trench, right up here. Okay? This was the other entrance. To a nearby opening, leading to a biome with extensive fossilized remains. And if you go straight up, well, a little further out and then straight up, you'll come out where I was showing you the entrance to it earlier. Now, there are two different entrances over here. One of them goes to that research outpost that we just visited. The other one comes down here. So let's double back. I need another water bottle already. Actually, I can have several of these. Here we go. Our nutrient blocks just lovely. here and the next stop is going to be over here to the left as well so if you're keeping up the skull is right over here that's where we initially came in this one right here goes to that blood trench entrance slash exit this is another direction right over here oh my 
my gosh, these stupid fish. Let me make sure I'm going the right way. I am not. This is all going the same way. That's right. Okay. So the back of it all goes over there. Back to the blood trench area. Come back over here to the left side. So if you're coming down the ribcage, you head off to the right to get to the rest of the Lost River area. You will see some additional fossils down here. You can't scan those, don't worry about them. We'll just double back around this bend. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Okay, now, this area right here, with that fossil and the brine waterfalls, this is the main uh, chamber of the Lost River. As you can see, it's right here in the middle, okay? There are three different directions you can go from here, and I will show you where all of those go. Go ahead and scan this fella. Get back in here before we cook. Okay. Ah, sea dragon skeleton. The semi intact skeletal structure of a Leviathan class predator. Head trauma. There's clear evidence of a massive physical trauma to the head. The damage is so severe it is likely the cause of death and must have occurred somewhere nearby. Damage is consistent with a high speed collision with a solid object. In other words, this dude was moving! Age. Something in the environment has helped to preserve these remains, but calcium decay suggests an approximate time of death 1,000 years ago. Bone growth suggests the creature was in the egg laying stage of its life cycle. So, that tells us a couple things as well. So once you come in here, you're going to see these things right here. I'm not going to go in there just yet, but I want you guys to remember the data entry that I just read off to you, okay? So right over here is something that we're going to be coming to later on. This is the Grove Tree area. So I'll be coming to this later on, but that's what it looks like. One of the most beautiful parts of the game, and it is extremely peaceful in there as well. But I'm not going there just yet. I do have good reason for it, okay? So, in the Lost River, there are three juvenile ghost leviathans. Shout out to one of the guys in the Discord server earlier because we were talking about this, and he reminded me of a third one that I had forgotten about that's up here on the other side of this waterfall. Oh, waterfall, Brian Fall, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so this is the ghost forest up here. It's kind of spooky. You see the ghost rays? That's what those guys are. They are bigger than the jelly rays that we saw in the mushroom forest. And there's the other juvie leviathan that I had forgotten about that's right up there. This is a fairly big area. He's not too hard to avoid, but you still want to be careful. As you saw earlier, they can take a decent chunk out of your health. They do a decent bit of damage to your Seamoth as well. Alright, so there are two points of entrance uh, interest here. The first one is right back here. Behind this little brine waterfall. So if you need a breath of fresh air, yes, boys and girls, this is atmosphere down here. Helped out by that uh, force field that we went through. So you follow this long winding path and you come to an alien arch right here. But as you can see, there is no place to put an ion cube. This is another exit. Where is the entrance arch, you ask? You will find out much later on. You're not going to find out this episode. I will show you guys in another episode. So, yes, that's pretty much all there is to see down here. If you wanted to 
you know, breath of fresh air or to stop if you can down here. I don't know how fresh this air is down here, but figuratively speaking, you can come over here. All right. The other point of uh, interest over here. Man, English is not working for me today. And you'll be able to see it right there. Leave me alone. Oh boy. Make sure he stays away. Yeah. All right. Let me get a little bit further away so I can show on the map just where that leads. Okay, so, Ghost Forest Entrance. If you were wondering where exactly this leads. So, <clears throat> excuse me. This comes right up here, all right? If we go up, that shows you exactly where it's at. Right over here, okay? And this is the Blood Kelp Zone, right over here. That's where that one leads. This is another popular entrance to the Lost River right up here. And this is showing all the different ways that we've gone so far. Over here, this looks like another area that I didn't get to, but this was the uh, Grove Tree area. And that's actually where I'm gonna go now. Because the other area is that I'm gonna take you through is the exit that I'm gonna take out of this biome. Those things are super creepy, and this ghost forest is creepy as well, but it's also very pretty in a unique way, in my opinion. I personally like it down here. Okay, heading back to the main area again. We're just going to go ahead and skip on across to the grove tree. And as you can see, we're already below 800 meters, so you want to be careful in this area with where you put your vehicle. Because at this point, you should not have additional upgrades. So what I'm going to do in this area, I'm going to go ahead and head over here to the middle. And I will scan this tree for you, because if you haven't been down here before, I'm sure you are very interested in this thing. And what exactly that is there in the middle. Giant coat tree. Okay, go ahead and hop back into our CB while I read this. Welcome aboard, Captain. Giant coat tree. A vast tree encountered in a deep cove and the only one of its kind encountered on the planet. The tree is surrounded by rays grazing on its pink outer leaves. Bark. A hardy, fast growing bark covers the outside of the tree. Minuscule organisms inhabit the notches in the surface. Ghost Leviathan eggs. That's right. That's where these guys come from. The tree's branches are wrapped around a number of maturing eggs belonging to the species designated Ghost Leviathan. This tree appears to be an ancient nesting ground. The eggs were laid when this tree was young, and now the branches protect and grow with them as they await the right conditions to hatch. If some of you are asking right now, do these things ever hatch? Sadly, no. They do not. Alright, so, I'm leaving my CV behind right now. I'm going to do some exploring. So that acidic brine up there, I did mention that you cannot go into those. You can go into this though, this blue one. You can go in here, so don't be shy about it. It's not going to hurt you whatsoever. What I am looking for down here is a very specific resource that can be kind of difficult to find. I am looking for nickel. I also need to pick up some crystalline sulfur, but... I will not find that in here. I will find the sulfur in... There's some nickel right there. That's what it looks like, right there. I will find the sulfur up there in all the brine in the Lost River. I've been showing you guys around, so I haven't been looking for it. But I only need a few, so it's not a big deal. I do need a decent amount of nickel, though. So I'm going to do quite a bit of exploring down here. and grab some uraninite as well, just in case I decide to build a nuclear reactor. 
I don't know if I'm going to, but if I do, might as well grab it now so I don't have to double back. There's some more nickel. There's some more nickel. And as always, make sure that you are keeping an eye on your oxygen while you're down here. More nickel. And there are a lot of outcrops down here as well. But we should not have the ability to get down here with any of our equipment yet. Not a big deal. Because we will soon. Lots of nickel right here. Outstanding. More you ran in it. That one was intentional. Nickel. Man, this is a great, great haul. Nickel can be pretty sparse, especially in this area. Usually you have to go a little bit deeper for it. So I am very happy so far. But I'm not done yet. By the way, this spot right here in this area and over here are both very popular locations for a forward base. A lot of people will set up a base down here. Uh, more of an outpost. Those are great locations, mostly because of the heat vents. You just set up a ton of thermal plants, and you have constant renewable energy. Let me go ahead and refill on oxygen and dive a little bit deeper into this area. And just like with the majority of the Lost River, it is very bright down here. So you shouldn't really need your lights that much. And if you check the temperature gauge on the bottom right, you can see just how hot it gets around these vents. So you will get some really good output from your thermal plants. All right. So this is the edge of the world, so to speak. And it just completely drops off. Warning. It goes Last way down. Depth reached. Hull damage imminent. Clearly, I can't go down there with uh, my submersibles right now. But that's fine. I don't need to go down there just yet. I am still just gathering resources. Excuse you. Mm -hmm. Nothing here. Cruising Look for a little bit more. How much uranium do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get two more. Eight. Nine. Okay, that's it for that. Now I'm just looking for nickel down here. Sandstone, sandstone, nickel. They look like little potatoes. Jump in here, see if there's anything here. Yeah, like I said, there's a ton of outcrops. So once you have the ability to get down here with your prawn suit, this is a great place to farm resources. Great, great place. Um, one more nickel. Wonderful. find any more in this area. Should be fine. I've picked up quite a bit. What am I looking like here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That should be good. I might need a couple more, but I'm not going to need it for a long time. So let's go ahead and start backtracking. Water. Use both of the last ones. Okay. Um, where am I at? There we go. Alright, so now I will show you the last area of the Lost River, which is the very popular mountain entrance. I'll also explain why it's so popular here in a little bit. Go 
ahead and take another swig of my iced sweet tea. That's right. Suck it, Ritz. Mmm. Sweet southern... <sighs> sweet summer sauce. Love it. All right. Back to the main Lost River area. So, while I am going to this last area, I am going to be looking through this brine for sulfur. And it can be difficult to see sometimes. You have to be careful, especially because it is so acidic down there. But we should be okay. Um, hopefully I come across some. I should see some more as well. Okay, so these sections right here I skipped earlier for good reason. The main event down here in the Lost River has not loaded in yet. There it is. All right. That alien structure me. appears to have collapsed to the sea floor. Hmm. You don't say. All right. So the entrance is right here. This moon pool area. It is on the back side of it. If you're coming from the center, I'm just gonna park it right here. Do some exploring. Detecting an alien broadcast. Linguistic analysis reads, Caution, hazardous materials and life forms contained within. Interior walls in this section are substantially reinforced, indicating the designers were seeking either to keep something out or contain it within. Whatever their intention, it clearly failed. Mm, yes, indeed it did. Okay, sea dragon egg. Ray specimens. By the way, you guys saw that other uh, console right up there. I did not bring my other purple tablet, so I can't open it. I'll come back and do it later. Not a big deal. I'm not too concerned with it right now. I will definitely come back for it, though. Integrating new PDA data. That one's going to be important later. Another Leviathan fossil right here. Quite a few data entries to read. Residual biological evidence suggests indigenous life forms were brought to this location and subjected to intensive study. And you saw the warper parts show up, and yes, this is a partially constructed warper. Pretty wild. Okay, make sure, I don't think I can scan any of the rest of this stuff in here, which is fine. Just need to get this last bit of data right here. Data pertaining to the bacterium is being downloaded. Caution. Detecting atypical fluctuations in blood plasma proteins. A self-scan is strongly advised. Let's go ahead and do that. Self-scan complete. Bacterial infection has spread to the skin and pulmonary system. Medical report recorded to date to bank. It is imperative you find a way to neutralize the infection. Yeah, so pretty wild little cutscene there. As you can see, the infection has spread. Welcome aboard, Captain. So, we've learned quite a few things about this area right here. So let's take one at a time. The damage report is the first one that I want to read. Leviathan detected at facility perimeter, closing at high speed. Exterior cable, uh, anchor cable impacted with massive force. Exterior anchor system buckling, facility sinking, collision with seafloor. Breaches detected in containment unit seven, Leviathan eggs. Immediate specimen destruction protocol initiated. 314 specimens destroyed. One specimen unaccounted for. Evacuating staff to off-site sanctuaries. Planetary quarantine protocol initiated. Warning, infected individuals may not leave the planet. So, I'll take this a step at a time. This is alluding to that scan of the sea dragon skeleton 
that I scanned earlier on. Remember it said that it had massive head trauma? Yeah, that's because it came and essentially took this out. They said that they had Leviathan eggs in here. That specimen was also in the egg laying stage. So using context clues, we can infer that it attacked it because they stole its eggs. Pretty wild stuff. It's also saying that it was looking to destroy all of the specimens, and then they started evacuating staff to off-site sanctuaries, which are the sanctuaries that I raided in the last video. Hakara Contagion Profile. This terminal contains extensive data regarding the bacterial contagion identified as Kara. Discovery, first encountered during routine network expansion on Outer Worlds. Pandemic development. Network area resulted in routine quarantine procedure failure. Contagion was uploaded to and spread quickly through the core worlds. Confirmed deaths, 143 billion individuals. Talk about catastrophic numbers right there. Cat catastrophic casualties. Bacterial mechanisms. Attaches to healthy living cells and mutates the basic genetic structure. Symptoms. Stage 1. Gradual immune system failure. Stage 2. Green skin lesions and flu-like symptoms. Stage 3. Unpredictable alterations to biological structure. Stage 4. Complete shutdown of executive function. So right now we are at stage 2. We just got our green skin lesions. Emergency steps taken. Core worlds quarantined. Bacterial samples distributed to isolated disease research facilities for vaccine development. That's what they were doing here. That tells you right there. Those aliens were working on developing a cure for the Kara contagion. What else do we have here? Self-warping self quarantine enforcer unit. I'm not going to read this entire thing. Um, mostly because this video is already getting fairly long as it is, and I still have to show the rest of the Lost River. But essentially, these warpers were created by the aliens to seek and destroy anything that was infected. So I did mention before that the warpers get much more hostile the more that we advance into the game because our infection spreads. So, the sicker you are, the more hostile they get. Drive force shielding breach, I read that one earlier. Uh, public documents, no, there was nothing in there. Uh, remains of research specimen. This was the big boy that was in there. The environment constructed to house the specimen suggests it was kept alive in containment for research purposes for months or even years. Organic matter indicates the habitat once supported extensive plant life, though it has since decayed. When the facility collapsed, the specimen was either left to die or killed on the spot. While it shares some skeletal uh, traits with the biter and sand shark, including its distinctive double eye sockets. This fossilized specimen is significantly larger and features unusual forearms rarely seen in aquatic species. This species has likely gone extinct in the past thousand years and its evolutionary relatives have evolved almost beyond recognition. And ancient floater, yeah. Okay, so that's all for in here. Let's bounce. And as you exit, you can go straight forward, and this takes you to the mountain exit, right up here. So let's get to cruising. We're also going to be looking for sulfur as we come through here. Okay, the crystalline sulfur is an ugly little rock. It is yellow with hints of gray and silver. And you can usually find it in this brine river. <laughs> Fuck off. Mm, no luck so far. And there is the third ghost leviathan down here, the juvie, I should say. Alright, so, this is the main reason people come to this entrance right here. I might have to fend him off. This is why, right here, this is an immediate access to the inactive lava zone, straight through here. The other entrance was over there on the other side of the cove tree that I showed you. So, hello, Casper. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Okay. 
hopefully I can find some sulfur in here. Thank you for saying hi. Hope you're doing well as well. I'm just gonna dip in here real quick. Nothing. That's a bummer. All right. Anything in here? No. So typically, your uh, CMOS help will deteriorate much, much faster. But since I have that whole reinforcement, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, it, it helps quite a bit. There's one other thing that I want to scan on the way out as well. Which is going to be pretty cool once I get to it. I can't believe I haven't come across any sulfur. There's some! You see it? Yeah. And I'm going to show you why I brought my propulsion cannon as well. You line it up. Boom! Just like that. No need to go in there and risk your life. This bad boy right here. This is the other scan I wanted to make. Oops. Can I scan this one? I cannot. I cannot scan this yet. Okay, that's fine. But, as you can see, Reaper died down here. How in the hell Reaper died down here? We don't know. Yet. Dun dun dun! Alright. And here's the end of it. This is the mountain entrance. Nothing super exciting going forward. Mainly just a great big entrance. And we are out. And you can hear Mabel. Yes, she is very, very close. Want to exercise caution when you leave this exit. Okay, I'm a little disappointed that I only found one piece of sulfur, but that's fine. I should be okay with just that one. Well, can't be a leg. Why not? Okay, and we're heading back to the base. Straight through the bulb zone. There is another wreck right here. If you want to explore it, you're more than welcome to. I do not have any other blueprints that I need to find. I should be good to go. We will see if I'm lying in the next episode openly admit it to you guys if I was wrong. Alright, so we go through the bulb zone, pass over this northeastern mushroom forest. We'll go through a couple other biomes as well on our way back home. So, I'm not going to be doing anything else in this video it's already going to be the longest one to date which is fine I really wanted to break down what the Lost River looked like how it was laid out and how you can properly navigate it I hope it helped if it did please let me know I would love to hear feedback from you guys and I'm not going to say this very often but if you haven't yet please uh, you know subscribe I would really really appreciate the support I'm not going to be one of those YouTubers who regularly say, Hey, comment, like, and subscribe to all my videos. Make sure you have the bell going. I'm not going to be doing all that. But I do want to mention it at one point because a lot of my traffic comes from people who are not subscribed. So if you're watching this, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate your support. All right, boys and girls, we are home. I am going to call it for this episode. It was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. 
I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care.